Welcome to VOA's Red Carpets, the show that brings you the latest in entertainment news, in sports, in film and television from around the world. My name is Jackson Vungani. Let's go. Now, due to the coronavirus, Voice of America is reducing the number of people who work from our headquarters here in Washington, D.C. So our shows are going to look a little different as we deal with this virus. We are working to keep you informed and we really appreciate you for staying on with us right here on the red carpet. Let's begin. And with that, the entertainment world continues to be rocked by the spreading coronavirus. Disney has shut its California theme parks and will release Frozen 2 on its streaming service a few months early, giving a welcome distraction to families cooped up at home and a boost to Disney+. Plus. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is delaying its 2020 induction ceremony, which was to have honored Whitney Houston, Notorious B.I.G., and the Dave Matthews Band. Musician Nile Rogers says that Shell's Here We Go Again tour has been postponed. This is the rebound effect of uh, uh, us playing uh, at the same venue today that uh, Rudy Gobert uh, tested uh, positive for coronavirus yesterday, so they closed down in, uh, our arena and they've canceled uh, the rest of the share tour for a bit. And uh, now we're on a plane flying home and we don't know what's gonna happen. So we're just trying to be safe and um, uh, you know, stay positive. More NBA players have tested positive for the virus. Actor Tom Hanks and wife Rita Wilson have been receiving well wishes from many as they recover in Australia. Actor Idris Elba has tested positive for the virus. Actress Octavia Spencer is hoping for the best as the world grapples during this challenging time. Well, it's uh, definitely a, a trying time for the entire world. Uh, and I'm just prayerful for everyone to be safe and for those who have lost people, you know, to know that we are all in the same boat and that our prayers are with them. At the African International Fashion Week in Cape Town, designers incorporated the virus into their runway looks with models wearing adhesive glittering rhinestones around their mouth in the shape of surgical masks. Designer Gavin Raja on Thursday says masks are powerful images. So the use of the mask is very kind of symbolic because the mask isn't really about necessarily protecting you, but what it's going to do is alienate you from the rest of the people around you. It's going to set you apart. Because the deadly virus originated in China, Raja says that Asian communities are especially vulnerable to suspicion and fear. We're trying to create a form of expression and turn something which is negative into a form of something which is beautiful. Coronavirus is also raising doubts about the timing of this year's Olympic Games in Tokyo. One of the athletes preparing to compete is a young boxer from Botswana who has defied the odds to become the country's first ever female Olympian in the sport. Kodisi Dube has more on the woman punching her way through adversity. Sadiq Amuhetzikinos is basking in rare glory. The 23-year-old from Botswana has become the first ever woman boxer to represent a country at the Olympic Games. I was a bully at school. Like, a week cannot pass by without without involved in a school fight. My first coach called me because he saw me in, in stuff from getting beaten for beating other uh, other kids. So he came to me, recruit me to join boxing, but I didn't agree at first. Eventually, she did agree and quickly became an impressive boxer. Kenosi won the gold in the African Youth Games in 2014. 
but as a junior African champion in a male-dominated sport, she faces challenges. In Botswana, we have few women in boxing, so it's it's hard to train because you have to spar, <laughs> to, to spar. So when there are fewer, it's, it's a challenge to us. Genesis national team coach Letsetsani Mastaluza says her gains in the sport are inspiring other young women. It has been a bit difficult, um, but now I believe she has made a case for boxing. Uh, all the youngsters out there are going to see this. They have seen her achievements, they have seen the achievements of other women also who are in boxing. An advocate for getting more women in sports, Kenese Katisenge, says Genosi is a trailblazer. It's an achievement that now helps us to make a case for women and girls in sport. It's an achievement that also makes it easy for us to break the barriers and to start conversations or continue conversations about the importance of participation of women and girls in sport. Authorities hope Genosi's feet could pave way for more girls to participate, especially in contact sports like boxing and rugby. In Botswana, uh, the girl child um, oftentimes has to look after their younger siblings. They are also expected to prepare meals for the rest of the family. So that is one point. The second point is our sports facilities have generally not been too safe um, for girl children. Mkondi Sidube for VOA News, Haboroni, Botswana. And for more sports news, soccer star Ronaldinho was arrested in a hotel in Paraguay's capital after authorities say that he entered the country with falsified documents. The 39-year-old Brazilian and his brother Roberto Assis were taken to a police station in Asuncion, where they say they had come for business. They say the documents were a gift from a Brazilian businessman. Ronaldinho's fans are not happy with the news. I think Ronaldinho is one of the best players ever. It is sad to see that his career came to an end when he was 28 years old. And from there, it kept going downhill. Going from one team to the next without a lot of success, lots of parties, wanting to have his house right next to the stadium. He kept going from worse to worst. Um, I think he should um, get, get his punishment, what, what he deserves, because entering a country with a fake passport, of course, is illegal. So whatever action needs to be taken from for that, it should be taken. Um, but however, um, you know, celebrities shouldn't get treated differently, you know, it's an it's a offence what he did, so, you know, it should, it should be dealt the right way. And now for some music news, something we always look forward to. You might remember Donald Glover, a.k.a. rapper Childish Gambino, after his music video for his Grammy-winning hit, This Is America, got a lot of attention with its images and lyrics about gun violence and racism in America. Well, he's back with new tunes, dropping his latest album, which came as a surprise. Donald Glover Presents includes 12 songs and artists such as 21 Savage, Ariana Grande and Caesar are featured but can only be currently heard on the website donaldgloverpresents.com. And as we continue to celebrate Women's History Month, one woman is inspiring change among cartoonists. In the almost 100 years New Yorker magazine has existed, it's published thousands of cartoons, and yet never in its history had a black female cartoonist published for the magazine, that is until Liz Montague came on board. BOS Karina Bafradizian brings us the story. Scratch. 24-year-old cartoonist Liz Montague lives in a small apartment in downtown Washington, D.C. Here she works on most of her cartoons for the New Yorker magazine. She started working for the publication about a year ago, which made her the magazine's first black female cartoonist. I was scrolling through Instagram one day, honestly, and was on the New Yorker cartoons Instagram and was just like, Scrolling through and noticed that a lot of the characters looked the, same, looked the same, a lot of them had the same skin tone, a lot of them were like dealing with subjects within the same 
uh, like class structure, if that makes sense. Um, and I just felt like, oh, like they could really diversify their topics. They could really diversify the characters being used. And so I just like hit the email button and just was like, hey, um, big fan. But I think that you guys should really um, start using like more artists if you can, and artists from different backgrounds with different perspectives. Um, to just contribute more to the conversation. And then surprisingly, Emma Allen, who's the cartoon editor, emailed me back um, and basically asked if I had anyone that I could recommend. And I said, me. The editors took one look at her work and asked her to join the team. Her first work of two black women standing on the roof was published in the magazine two weeks later. Every week, the magazine's cartoon editors receive thousands of drawings and sketches, but only about 15 make it to publication. In the last year, The New Yorker has published at least six of Montague's cartoons, and she is working on more for upcoming issues. Her work with the magazine has opened up a new world. Everything kind of changed. I just started getting so many more career opportunities, so many more um, just people like noticing me, which has been kind of weird. Um, I got a book deal from Random House, which was incredible. And it's just like I'm now able to support myself fully as an artist, which is pretty incredible. Montague says she hopes others see that confidence in yourself and your work can go a long way in countering stereotypes, gender, racial and age. Once you decide like my perspective is valid, it's good enough, I'm good enough and like I'm going to, you know, hold my ground with other people to convince them that I'm good enough, then that's really like the biggest battle. Montague now has the freedom to create a lifestyle that works best for her. Rather than moving to New York City, she is moving to Philadelphia to be close to her family and continue to create her art. For Karina Bafredjan in Washington, Anna Rice, VOA News. Miss World rehearsals are underway. Alphabetical order, come on, Yugoslavia. What are you doing up here? That's A. <laughs> And then we have Misbehavior Costas, Kira Knightley, and Gugumbatha Rao, who are no strangers to bringing the stories of real women from the past to the big screen. Their latest movie follows the landmark 1970 Miss World Final, notable for its disruption by the women's liberation movement for its winner, the first black woman to be crowned Miss World. Knightley plays Sally Alexander, currently Professor Emerita at Modern History at Goldsmith University of London and one of the protesters who stormed the stage of the show's live broadcast at a time when the world-famous beauty pageant was the most-watched show in the UK. There's another figure from history that Knightley is eager to portray, given the opportunity. Because I've always been obsessed by the French Revolution, so uh, Josephine de Beauharnais, who turned into Josephine Bonaparte, but the story before she marries Josephine, uh, but before she marries Bonaparte, it's a great one. I just need somebody to write the script, direct it, produce it, and get a lot of money, because it would be really expensive. I'd start to believe they have a place in the world. We're black. We're not going to be Ms. World. Bell star Gugum Batha who plays Jennifer Hostin, Miss Grenada, who wins the Miss World title, is open to suggestions for another weather historical subject to bring to film audiences' attention. I'm always looking for the unknown stories. I think I didn't know particularly about Miss World in 1970. You know, when I did Belle, I didn't really know about that story either. Um, so I'm, I'm always looking to be surprised. I think there's so many stories, and especially the history of women and the history of women of colour. I think, you know, or the history of women of colour. You know, I think there are many, many, many stories still to be told and still to be uncovered. So, um, yeah, if you have any... Or, um, let me know. I don't want you to think I'm some kind of brute that doesn't consider the feelings of women. I consider feeling women all the time. Get this. Tonight may be the start of something, Bob. This competition makes us compete with each other and makes the world narrower for all of us in the end. Why should any woman have to earn her place in the world by looking a particular way? <laughs> you don't. He doesn't. Why should we? And thanks for watching VOA's Red Carpet. I'm Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. We are on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube. Until next time, 
Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.